without further ado, let's give a warm Sheboygan welcome to Tyco Project All Stars.
evening. How are you guys all doing? Yeah. Hope you're enjoying the show so far. Um, we're a taiko project, and we are a taiko drumming ensemble based out of Los Angeles, California. Um, taiko in Japanese means drum. So all these different types of drums you see here are all different types of taiko. So traditionally in the ancient times, um, taiko wasn't normally seen in the street drumming style. It was mainly used by farmers. They would use it in like um, rituals where they would play the drums because they believed that it sounded like thunder and they, they were praying for a good harvest and lots of rain that, that, that season. Um, as we go down the line of history, it started becoming incorporated more into traditional Japanese music um, and theater, such as Noe Kabuki. And then it wasn't until about the 50s when a man named Daihachi Oguchi, um, he was a jazz musician, who decided to try to put taiko together and play it in a group ensemble kind of setting. And that's what you see here today, and it's called kumi daiko, which means group running. And so the next piece um, that we would like to share with you is a piece called Yodan Uchi. Uh, Yodan in Japanese means four, so we're actually going to be playing on four different sides of the drum. Um, and this is a piece that comes from a group in Japan called Skeroku Taiko. So this is Yodan Uchi. <laughs>
I'm going to talk a little bit about how Taiko uh, came from Japan to America. And uh, I'm a fourth generation Japanese American. I mean, not me, not my parents, not my grandparents, my great grandparents came from Japan to America in the early 1900s. And, you know, uh, we're basically looking for, for opportunities. In Japan, there was a terrible drought and famine. Um, so they came here to look for, for new work, for new lives. And they brought with them all sorts of the, you know, the culture and, and language and food. I'm sure there are even people here who eat sushi and that kind of thing nowadays. Um, but they didn't bring them with them the, the taiko. The taiko was a little bit too heavy to kind of take with them across the Pacific Ocean. And so they just brought mainly their belongings with them. However, they did set up uh, temples, Buddhist temples and, and shrines. Um, and they would have festivals still here in the United States. Um, and then when a man named Seiji Tanaka came from Japan to America in the 1960s, he went to the San Francisco Cherry Blossom Festival and he saw that there were no taiko. He was like, oh man, how can we not have a Japanese festival without taiko? Yeah? So he took it upon himself to go back to Japan and study taiko and bring taiko here to America. Um, and he formed the very first taiko group called the San Francisco Taiko Dojo. Around the same time in Los Angeles, another group was, was uh, starting to form, and this group was called Kina Taiko. And their philosophy is more of a Buddhist side of things. Tanaka Sensei, his group, Samsung Taiko Dojo, was more kind of like an energetic, kind of therapeutic thing. But for Kina, it was a little bit more laid back, a little bit more Los Angeles, a little bit more laid back, a little bit more West Side kind of thing. So, um, we're going to play their piece. This is a piece called Shishimai, and uh, this is the lion dance. So. It's kind of like more of a theatrical thing, and uh, we like to incorporate a lot of different kinds of stuff into uh, our music nowadays. So this is Shishimai. <laughs>
bunch of different you know, slides came from. But uh, like any other instrument that you can see in a band or orchestra, these are all considered type drum, but within the type of drum category, we have a bunch of different um, drums. And so the first one I hear, the small one, is called a shime daiko. And this one is one of the smallest drums that we have here. It's also one of the most highest pitch. Uh, the way we tune it is so this. Well, there's actually two different ways. Uh, one of them is uh, the bolt. I tune that they're uh, screwed on, I guess, screwed together with those nuts, nuts and bolts. And the other one is where we have rope, and the rope is actually weaved in and out of the, the heads of the drums. And so this is what the shim is on.
we use our voice. The second way is to start playing a song all together. So uh, rock stars have one, two, one, two, three, four. We have a uh, humble each me sole. And that tells us two things. We want to start playing a song and also the tempo at which to play it at. So if we have a slow song, it would just go each me sole. And a faster song would be each me sole. Each me sole. Each me sole. Each me sole. The third way that we use our voice is to learn all the songs that we play. So uh, most of us uh, didn't have a lot of Western musical training. Some of us took band and was in drumline. Um, but most of us learned how to play type on all of our songs through a uh, form of verbal notation where uh, all the drum sounds that can be made have a sound that we can make with our voice too. And so we not only learned how to sing a song with our voice, and then learned how to translate it onto the drum. So uh, for example, if Mom were to hit once in the center, call that dom.
Now come to part of the show where we get to give you guys a chance to play. So, we have to learn a few things first, and the good news is you've already started learning the most important thing, which is how do we start our songs? How do we start our songs? Aha! Let's review. So we start our songs by saying sore. Okay, the way it works is I'm going to say the numbers each me in Japanese. You guys are gonna respond with sore. So let's practice. Okay? Each ni sore. Each ni sore. Each ni sore. Each ni sore. Oh, very nice, very nice. Okay, so that's the most important part. The next thing we have to learn is what are we going to play together? Well, we have a piece, and this piece is called oroshi. Can everyone say oroshi? Oroshi. Anyone here ever had sushi? I think this question might have been addressed earlier. Very good. You know that little, uh, that white stuff that comes that's made of radish that's diced up really finely? That's also an oroshi. Daikon is really big, and they chop it up into those tiny pieces. Right here, we're going to take a giant space between hits, and we're going to chop that up into smaller spaces. Oroshi. Okay, so Maz is going to demonstrate oroshi for us. So he's going to basically be speeding up until he can't play any faster, and then there'll be one loud don at the end, just like this. So, hey!
Um, but I think for me, even though all of those things are important, and, and these guys can tell you I harp on musical stuff a lot, um, there's something deeper about just watching a technical performance, especially the first time you see it. Uh, it just it kind of touches you in a special place, and that's what happened to me the first time, and that's why I chose to uh, not be an engineer like my parents wanted me to, and do this for my living. So yeah, it's kind of a special thing for me. Tyco is life. <laughs> Thank you for being a great audience. This is our first time in Wisconsin. 